fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. 8.06 the time here on this Sunday Fun day morning. Great to have you with us, everyone. We are broadcasting live from California's beautiful Central Coast each and every week. That's what we do. We come to you from uh, downtown, historic San Luis Obispo, and then we travel all over the state. Santa Cruz, San Jose, the Bay Area in general, Los Angeles, the Sierra Nevada, Central Valley, North State, deserts, you name it, we're there to uh, have a good time with you. And uh, it's our goal each and every week here on uh, Eat, Drink, Explore Radio to give you the tools you need to enjoy California's lifestyle in a healthy, fun, and hopefully community-focused manner. Uh, Straight ahead on the show today, we have uh, a company that is uh, out of uh, Seattle, I believe. I'll I'll have to double-check with our guest that's coming up. It's called Field Roast Grain Meat. And uh, I was looking for an alternative this 4th of July, and we are still technically in the 4th of July weekend, so I should say happy 4th to all of you. Hope you enjoyed your Independence Day weekend. I wore my American flag swim trunks the other day. <laughs> I think they come out of the drawer, the summer drawer, once a year, uh, right, on the, right around the 4th of July, or on the 4th in this case, uh, as I went swimming at the uh, local pool. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of, you know, they're fun to slip on. I bought them like 20 years ago, I want to say. Might have been. It might have been 20 years ago. And you can still get them on. That's good. I could still. I know. <laughs> How do you like that? It's really good. I'm jealous. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, I got them at Old Navy. That's Anthony Renaro, by the way. Anthony is our audio guy, and he's filling in for Patty, who is Patty Pyburn, our, my wonderful co-host, who's home studying for the final, final of her master's degree. So congratulations to uh, Miss Pyburn. And um, yeah, so uh, I bought them at, uh, what's that place? Um, I just said it. Old Navy. I Old Navy, thank you. I bought them at Old Navy. You know, it was one of those impulse buys. Oh, American flag shorts, cool. <laughs> and uh, then you realize, well, you don't want to like always have those on. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, so they're, they come out once a year. They're novelty shorts, yes. Uh, so anyway, I wore those, and but I, ne- I missed all of the fireworks and that sort of thing. I could see the fog had moved in. Uh, in Morro Bay and at Pismo Beach. Those are the two closest firework uh, presentations to where we live. And so uh, we just decided uh, we'll stay home. We'll watch it on PBS or or something. Then we never end up doing that either. I'm addicted to this show called Fringe right now on uh, On, uh, um, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, Yeah, I'm I'm watching it too. (laughs) I'm way behind you, but yeah. Well, I love I love being this far behind on a series, something people have been watching f- long ago. Because there's a hundred episodes, so you can. I know that scared me. I think I'm on nine. You can really go on a <laughs> you can go on a bender when when you're watching them that way. So, <laughs> any rate, uh, back to the topic at hand, and that is our our guest coming up. Tommy McDonald will join us from Field Roast Grain Meat. That uh, is in Seattle, Washington. It is in Seattle. Thank you. Oh, see, now I have somebody to look up the stuff for me because that's what Patty does during the I'm just show. Trying to fill in for Patty. <laughs> Do right by her. Uh, so the, I was looking for something to barbecue cause you know, it's the fourth. I kind of wanted a Frankfurter or a sausage or something, but I've gone, uh, plant-based for my diet. So I found, uh, this organization or this uh, company field roast grain meat that across the board, even meat lovers say their sausages are awesome, but there's no meat in them. They even sell them at uh, AT&T ballpark in San Francisco. Uh, so that you can have a vegan hot dog while you watch the ball game. <laughs> Only in San Francisco. I love that city. So uh, at any rate, we're going to talk to uh, Tommy about uh, grilling and where they, you know, what what are these things made of after all? I'm assuming some sort of grain. Then uh, at 8.30, we talk about, and we've had Todd on the show before, uh, madeintheusaforever.com is his website, and it's all about uh, having things made locally again. So, you know, it's the 4th of July weekend. I thought, yeah, let's do a little Rah Rah USA and I'll have uh, Todd back on the show again and ask him uh, what sort of summertime things can you order right now that are made. He's, his site is constantly growing. He says it's expanding so rapidly because there is a huge demand for things made in the USA finally. 
And uh, some companies are finding it uh, not as profitable profitable as it used to be to make things overseas. And so much of that production, hopefully, will move back here to our shores. And so uh, we'll have Todd on to get an update there. And then at uh, 849, we welcome Gabe Saglia back to the show with Travel Zoo. He is our once a month guest, always the first Sunday of the month. And he, wow, he has a really long listing. I doubt we'll ever get through them all, but a uh, long listing of the best travel deals uh, everywhere from Sonoma Wine Country to Palm Springs and then way beyond California. Uh, just really great stuff. Next hour, you'll want to join us because we are uh, joined by Robert Hodgkins. He is a retired uh, statistics professor from Humboldt State University, my one of my two alma maters. And uh, he also happens to be a winemaker at a place called Fieldbrook Winery. He's been the winemaker there since uh, 1976 and knows a thing or two about making wine and making good wine. His wines have uh, won many awards, but he says the whole award judging process is bogus and that uh, from one tasting to the next, the, uh, the judge's results can vary greatly even when they're judging the exact same wine and they don't know it. <laughs> so, uh, it's, you know, these are blind tastings. They put the exact same wine in front of the exact same judge on multiple occasions and got drastically different results. And so uh, he says that, you know, a lot of wineries, they spend big money to enter into these uh, wine competitions, hoping for some sort of medal or high ranking that can then, uh, you know, they can use that as a sales point at the grocery store or at the uh, liquor store. Well, I judge by the points when I'm looking, See? Yeah, you're a point I'm looking for something that yeah. I'm not sure of. I'll look at the points. And if it's I do too. in the 90s, then I'm like, OK, it's got to be good. So. Everybody does. And that's yeah. what he's saying. They shouldn't because it varies so greatly. So I cannot Interesting. I cannot wait to talk to Robert and uh, ask him, you know, because he's a <laughs> he's a former statistics professor. So I'm sure he's got, you know, all sorts of information on. Uh, how he's come to this conclusion. And he's been asked to speak on this topic at, at many different uh, locations. We're very fortunate to have him on the show. And then finally, you may remember a couple of months ago, uh, we featured uh, California's recreational trail program and how uh, the state was going to purposely, well, I don't want to be misleading. They're not turning away the money. It's just that the money that comes for the state's trail program was going to be reallocated. <laughs> uh, the state would still get the money. It just wouldn't be destined for our state trails necessarily. Well, Marianne Fowler with Rails to Trails uh, has a meeting tomorrow morning with the man in California who's responsible for where this money goes. And he's had a little bit of a change of heart. Uh, he is now open to the idea of making sure that this money does go to our state's trails. And so she uh, is here in California, typically based out of Washington, D.C., and she's going to join us uh, to talk about her big meeting tomorrow and what uh, she hopes to accomplish. All right, you're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network here on this uh, Sunday morning. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by my fill-in co-host, Anthony Renaro, filling in for Patty. And we're back in just a moment. Randall White here, host of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, with a tip for Central Coast wine tasting. Eberly Winery was recently voted Winery of the Year by the world's top sommeliers and has one of the best local tours, according to Wine Spectator. Eberly Winery opened daily 10 to 6, and the winery's cave tours and wine tasting always complimentary. It's easy to find, too. Located on Highway 46 East, just three and a half miles from Highway 101. Now it's time to plan your visit. Just head to eberlywinery.com. Seems everybody's going organic, including lawn care. Did you know communities across the country are converting their lawns, playgrounds, and playing fields to an organic care program? And it's working. You can safely control weeds and pests and have a beautiful lawn. Your kids, pets, and water supplies will be safer, and your neighbors will be green with envy. Oh, and in the long run, organic lawn care is cheaper than doing it the conventional way. Switch to organic lawn care today. Visit PesticideFreeLawns.org. The folks who brought you this public service message. Check out PesticideFreeLawns.org today. 
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California. L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com. And enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love Business Recommendation Tool. The Eatrick Explore Media Radio Show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. Welcome back to the program on this Sunday morning, 819. Now the time. Great to have you with us, everyone, on what we like to say a Sunday fun day morning. And it is uh, food, wine, travel, tourism. Those are the general topics of the Edric Explorer radio show. You can watch our live video simulcast at eatdrinkexplore.com. It's basically radio with pictures or video, <laughs> and it's uh, it's fun. We like to put that together as a little sidebar, but uh, definitely you can catch us uh, on the airwaves at KSEO AM 1080 Santa Cruz. Hello, everyone there in the Santa Cruz, South Bay, Monterey County areas, and of course, Crush 92.5 FM as well in San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. All right, as many of you know just from listening to the show and hearing our general conversation each and every week. Uh, this year, 2013, uh, I moved into an all-plant-based diet. And, uh, you know, there's things I miss a lot. I was a, I was a yogurt, frozen yogurt junkie <laughs> going, into, uh, going into this year. And I have not yet found a replacement for that. However, I did read an article uh, that in the... Uh, San Francisco Bay Area and also Los Angeles, there are some uh, yogurt shops now that are making uh, frozen yogurts with coconut milk and rice milk and those sorts of things. So I'm really looking forward to that making its way 
you know, broadening out and uh, getting to uh, areas like the Central Coast uh, where I live. Uh, another thing that I miss is summertime grilling and throwing, uh, especially with this being the 4th of July weekend, uh, I really I felt like I kind of missed out a little bit because I was unable to throw some, uh, you know, I didn't get to have my hot dogs, apple pie, <laughs> and the whole, what was the other thing? Uh, and Chevrolet, I guess, was the ad. But but then I found uh, on vegnews.com a list of, uh, I think it was like a top 10 uh, grilling things you can grill, you know, in place of that. And it wasn't all portobello mushrooms, which is typically the, <laughs> the uh, go-to for that sort of thing. And uh, number one on the list was uh, frankfurters from a company based in Seattle, Washington called Field Roast Meats. Grain Meats, and uh, joining us on the line right now to talk a little bit about that is Tommy McDonald with Field Roast. Welcome to the program, Tommy. Hi, Randall. How's it going? Good. Thank you. I really appreciate you uh, joining us at this early hour on a Sunday, of course. Oh, oh it's, it's uh, my pleasure. <laughs> so uh, we were having a little discussion uh, on and off air here just a moment ago, uh, talking about, well... If these uh, aren't made with meat, then what are they made with? And uh, we were hoping you could enlighten us. Well, see, Randall, they are made with meat. And that's, that's what we tell everybody. But they're not made with animal meat. They're made with wheat meat. Aha! Uh-huh. So we, we, we make meat, and we make a product that is a traditionally made charcuterie. So we use the same practices that people have been using for ages. Is it the, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this, I think it's S-E-I-T-A-N, Satan? Yeah. Satan? It's, it's very similar to that. We, uh, we use the same type of practices, um, but then we just apply it to traditional charcuterie. <clears throat> so we use our fresh vegetables and local red wine and garlic, and we use that Satan meat, and we grind it up, and, and just like any other good uh, charcuterie, you start... You start with a grind. Mm-hmm. Um, so we use that in place of the animal meat, and then we bind it together with those awesome things that we love to have in our sausage. Yukon gold potatoes, local uh, Washington apples, uh, rubbed sage. And then what we get is something that is totally beyond anything else that's out there. I love it, and apparently it's uh, so authentic and good tasting. They're selling it at AT and T Ballpark in San Francisco, so you can literally have it alongside a baseball game. You got it. We we <laughs> we. I was just down there a couple weeks ago uh, w- watching them play the Dodgers, and uh, yeah, it was it was a great game. And Staten had a nice nice vegan Frank out in the park, out in the bay, and uh, yeah, it was wonderful. That's terrific. Now, traditional casing for sausages would also be animal-based. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't mind not eating a sausage <laughs> is thinking about that casing. Uh, but So how do you case these? Now, we, we kind of have a clever, uh, a clever little thing on that. Our casing is also our packaging. So we use a completely BPA-free uh, uh, plastic casing, and we... we you know, stuff the sausage into the casing, and we cook them in the casing. Um, and then that's the packaging for the product itself. So when you get it home and you cook it, uh, especially with our frankfurters, you can put that inside the packaging in, into some boiling water, boil the hot dogs, then obviously you want to remove the plastic casing afterwards, and then you can eat it. Or you can take it out while it's chilled uh, of the casing, and you can grill it like any other sausage that you've got. Yeah, because you wouldn't want to put the plastic on the grill. You can do it in the hot water, but not on the grill, right? Yeah, I would suggest no plastic on the grill. (laughs) Yeah, that one didn't work out in the test kitchen. Right. (laughs) Well, that's good for just general, uh, you know, reuse, recycle, all that sort of thing. Your casing's also your packaging. Yeah, totally, totally. And it's, it's, I think it's rather clever looking. Now, we've been focusing on the Frankfurters, but what, uh, other sorts of products do you uh, make there? Now we do a whole line of, of traditional sausages. So we do a Mexican chipotle, which mm. is our most spicy, but it's it's very very good. Um, we also do a smoked apple sage, which I believe is our most popular right now. Um, we do an Italian sausage. Um, then we do a line of deli sliced meat. We do a meatloaf. We do um, a roast, stuffed roast, holiday roast. Um, and if you go to AT&T Park, we actually do a, uh, 
a burger that we don't really sell to anybody except for except for the Giants, and up here we sell them to the Mariners too. Oh. and so uh, you just you just have to ask for it, or it's it's actually on the menu. It's on the menu. Okay, it's on the menu. But those are the only two places in the world you can you can go get them. Interesting. I like that. So uh, I checked ahead of time before uh, we had you on the show because. I don't like to feature things that our listeners can't actually go out and get. <laughs> and uh, you're available at several markets in the Santa Cruz area. There is at least one in San Luis Obispo County uh, throughout the South Bay. Uh, and so you're pretty well established here in California. Oh, yes, sir. Um, we're, we're in Costco. We're in Whole Foods. Um, I believe Molly Stones. Uh, if you go a little further south, we're in Mother's. So you can you can find us around. So you're in Costco. Are you in all California Costco's? Uh, we're not in every single one, um, but but what we do is we sell a variety pack of our three different flavors of sausages. Okay, I need to look for. I was just at Costco yesterday, and I need to uh, just be in the refrigerated like open the door section. Yep. That's okay. what it'll be. <laughs> That's the only way I know how to describe that. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's a technical term. All right. Okay, so uh, gluten-free has become a, a trend as people are starting to become aware of what is causing their digest and digestion problems in many cases. Uh, clearly, if these are made from all wheat uh, products, these would not be suggested for uh, people with on a gluten-free diet. No, we are not gluten free. Actually, we we tell people that we are gluten full. Um, gluten full, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we 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 know that we're not for everybody out there, um, but we make we know we make a good quality food product. Um, and and actually, our products don't contain any soy whatsoever. Oh well, that's so because if, there's people yeah. that are trying to cut that out too. Exactly. So if you know, we might not be the the right product for for you if you're celiac or if you're trying to cut wheat out of your diet. But you know, if you if you would rather have a diet without soy, we are a product that you might seek out. You know, I am trying my hardest to have. Uh, I'm not trying to cut soy entirely out, but I just don't want it to be uh, a large as large a presence as it uh, could be. And so, I do read the ingredients on many things to. You know, just try to get away from that. Uh, and when it comes to meat-like products, it seems like soy is always in there. So I'm really happy to hear that Field Roast uh, does not contain any soy. Fieldroast.com for more information. Tommy McDonald on some summer grilling options. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Hey, thanks a lot, Randall. All right, everyone, stick around because just after the commercial break, we are headed uh, down the coast to Southern California for some Made in the USA options. Can we have your attention for a moment? Eat, Drink, Explore Media has an important date we want to share with you. Saturday, July 13th. We invite you to join us at a craft beer and food event like no other. At last count, generous samples from more than 70 breweries will be paired with local culinary treats for the 2013 Breast Fest along San Francisco's waterfront at Fort Mason. Going on its 14th year, the annual Breast Fest has grown dramatically, raising money for an incredibly important cause, providing free complimentary treatments for women battling breast cancer. The Charlotte Maxwell Clinic offers services such as acupuncture, massage, organic foods, and transportation. The clinic's core mission to provide relief from the terrible side effects of cancer and its treatments. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is very proud to be among the main sponsors for this year's event. For more information, go to thebreastfest.org. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. Other groundbreaking ideas from that time, the whalebone corset, the pedal-operated submarine, and the two-story outhouse. We've come a long way since then. It's time our light bulbs did the same. Visit energysavers.gov and learn about energy-saving light bulbs. See, these new bulbs are more efficient than the old ones, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. They last longer, too, like how we humans last longer now that doctors use antibiotics instead of leeches. And they cut down on our energy costs. 
Because in our own groundbreaking age of barrel planes and moving pictures, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. The Eatrick Explorer Media Radio Show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. College students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. the time and a very good day, everyone. Really wonderful to have you with us here on this uh, Sunday morning. And uh, we do want to update you on yesterday's uh, horrific crash at uh, San Francisco International Airport. Uh, Our news is coming up a little more than a half hour from now. But uh, I just wanted to let you know that Chinese state media is reporting today Two teenage girls taking a uh, summer school trip to the United States are the identities of those killed yesterday morning when that Asiana jet crash uh, landed at SFO. They were 16 and 17, and according to uh, Oakland's KTVU, all passengers are now accounted for. Uh, 49 of the 307 people on board that plane are uh, still in serious condition. Uh, Six are listed in critical condition. We'll have more details uh, coming up, but I did want to give you uh, that information here at 834. All right, time now to uh, talk about having things made in the USA. And uh, as you know, uh, here on this show, we are always trying to get you to buy local, whether it's locally grown produce, uh, or just, you know, whatever it could be, anything. Uh, just if you have the option of buying something made in California, uh, made in the United States, even made in North America, for that matter, we always push you uh, in that direction because uh, the it really helps generate uh, the economies or uh, push the economy. So one person who is uh, even more an advocate uh, about this than I am is uh, Todd Lipscomb. He is a California resident as well, I believe lives down in Orange County. He's the man behind MadeInUSAForever.com, a great website. And Todd joins us on the line right now to talk about some summertime, maybe early fall uh, products that you can buy that are made right here in America on this 4th of July weekend. Hey, Todd. Randall, it's great to be back. I always love to be on your show. Yeah, well, I just, I really love your energy behind this. You, you send out a, uh, I think it's like a weekly email that I get that updates uh, me on different products that are now being made here. And, you know, a while back, not too long ago, uh, I always noticed the products were, you know, less high tech and just, 
you know, like mason jars or you know, just things that <laughs> things that I just felt like, well, OK, but uh, I'm noticing more and more the products that you're featuring are things that I would just assume if I turned it over would say made in China. But no, they're being made here in the U.S. now. Absolutely. Yeah, we're making a lot of progress, I think. And people are really waking up to this issue, sort of similar to the way people woke up to the organic issue, what, 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. started insisting that it, it get into the store. So I think that's the direction we're moving. I think we'll see uh, more and more Made in USA products, more and more, uh, you know, um, stores talking about it and, and uh, shelving space dedicated to it, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future in the main, uh, you know, national retailers. But, uh, yeah, we're pushing as hard as we can, and uh, we found uh, a number of, of suppliers all over the nation that are, are still making it here. And something cool that happened that I didn't realize was going to occur when I started this effort almost six years ago was that of these 600 suppliers on my website, 95% of them are actually small family-owned businesses. Oh, that's great. Yeah, isn't that neat? They're just... It turns out they're the folks that are, uh, you know, withstanding the tidal wave of imports, and uh, you know they know their workers and they care about quality. And uh, yeah, they're still really working hard to keep it made in USA and expanding more and more, as you say. Todd, clearly your website is a great resource for people that want to buy things locally. Uh, For people that are out shopping at the big box stores, the Walmarts, the Costcos, and that sort of thing, is it important? And I imagine your I can already I already know what your answer is going to be, but uh, I maybe I should say how important is it to make that direct connection with the cashier, with the manager, whoever, to say, you know, I was going to buy this. I really wish that it was made in the U.S. Right. I think that's an excellent point. That's exactly how this happened with the organic movement. We've got to keep pressuring uh, the stores. It's not that that clerk uh, you know, has the power to change anything or even maybe that store manager, but if they keep getting that reinforcement and keep passing it along, then uh, you know, eventually it gets heard by the executives. I mean, the, uh, the executives that run those companies don't want people leaving without buying as much stuff as they possibly could. Right. And if that's the reason they're not buying stuff, then they need to know about it. And, uh, you know, if thousands of us are saying that and doing that, then absolutely, you're at, you, you know, you've really, um, you know, hit a great point. Change will come. Yeah, because organics, like you mentioned, used to be a fringe mm-hmm. movement. Uh, oh, in, yeah. in fact, I was just yesterday listening to a country music song, uh, what is mm-hmm. George? Let's see. I'm trying to remember the name of this song. Anyway, it has to do with uh, things that he doesn't believe in, and then he says, "But I believe in love," you know. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it's an old, it's an old classic. I, I really like the song. I believe it came out probably in like 1980, 1981. And uh, anyway, he said one of the things he says is, "I don't believe in organic foods." Uh, you know, because back then that would have been popular to say, especially among maybe the country music listeners. Nowadays, that that wouldn't that line in that song probably wouldn't <laughs> go over nearly as well. Yeah, even where he's from, probably, huh? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, change so, happens, doesn't it? Over time, you know. I mean, it wasn't that many years ago, as far as history goes, that uh, you know the USA was a world's factory, you know, and it. A lot of us are still alive that would have remembered a lot more products made here and this change happening in the last few decades. And we can change it back. We can. I really yeah. believe that. We just we need to get behind. We vote with every purchase, basically, whether you know we're going to buy something locally or buy something made in the United States or buy something from some other country mm-hmm. and support our workers and support our tax base, too. You know, you know uh, buying something here keeps people working, keeps them paying taxes instead of uh, being on welfare. You know, uh, and frankly, the, I've seen, because I worked in Asia several times for an American tech company, uh, the worker safety conditions overseas oh, yeah. and the pollution, it's horrific. Well, we just, the, yeah, t- Todd, we just saw that garment factory collapse. Oh, my God, yeah, I know. I mean, it's crazy. Tragic, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh you know, that's how they get these ultra low, low prices is by exploiting these people in these dangerous conditions. And it's little wonder the chemicals get into the products. Like with the 83 million toys recalled, what was it, four years ago? Mm. Uh, all of them were imported. 80% of them were from China. And yes, there still are a lot of great, great toys made here. You know, there's, there's green toys made up in the Bay Area that we've been supporting from day one. And now they're really getting big. They take recycled plastic and make all sorts of wonderful creative toys. And also the oldest supplier on MadeInUSAForever.com 
is a toy maker. It's called Holgate, and they're from 1790. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. They've been making these wood toys that our grandfather's grandfather would recognize. Like the Lincoln Log Cabin? Because I had that growing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different company, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Some, some Lincoln Logs, I think they were called. Uh, right. <laughs> I wanted to briefly say that one uh, area where they were making the garments and the factory collapsed, um, mm-hmm. a reporter that I was listening to said the river there will change color based on what garment is being made that day because uh, of all the dye and everything just being uh, washed directly. Oh, yeah. It's an environmental uh, disaster on top of the human rights concerns that we have uh, going on yeah. in those uh, in those countries. Uh, I just sure, want to quickly yeah, say totally. Don Williams. I said George, but it's Don Williams was the guy who sang the song I Believe in Love. <laughs> that has nothing really <laughs> to do with what up. we're talking about. Tangential at best. Uh, so Todd, uh, in the remaining minutes, let's talk about some products that are on your site that people might rush out to buy during the summer or early fall. But uh, through your site, uh, mm-hmm. they can get something that's made here and help support our economy. Well, gosh, it's gotten so hot, hasn't it? Yes. Randall. You know, there's all sorts of products, shirts that, you know, um, help, uh, you know, the fabrics, especially designed, for example, to, uh, you know, absorb heat. I mean, to take that heat away from the body and keep people comfortable. There's a, a, a bunch of products from a company called Wickers, uh, literally from the term wicking, uh, um, oh. perspiration away from the body yeah. on there. And that's also our underwear supplier that, uh, you know, I, I rave about so much. And then there's other, other makers that have nice polo shirts or whatever that also help deal with the heat. And then come this fall when it starts to get a little bit cooler, you'll find, yes, there are jackets available here that are still made in the USA, uh, using USA fabric and so on. And, uh, you know, that go from very light to quite heavy. And people have a lot of more choices than they realize. If they'll just take a few minutes and look. And, you know, you mentioned Costco and the others. Another thing folks can do with all these smartphones now is, you know, do a quick search while you're there, you know, and, and see that there is a choice available and see that it's not that expensive. Oh, good point. I like that. Uh huh. Use your <laughs> use your phone. Sadly, I think 100 percent of the phones are not made here. But <laughs> but oh, you-, <laughs> you know, Motorola is about to start assembling one here, but it will have a lot of foreign content. And I heard that Apple, at one of their computers, will now be made uh, with at least some, will be assembled here and made with some parts uh, that yeah. are made here as well. Good for Apple. Absolutely, yeah. I'm very excited about that, too. Yeah. I, I love that they've always branded themselves as, or when you whenever you buy a big Apple product, which we have plenty of here, uh, mm-hmm. right there in, on the packaging, it says, designed in California. Right, yeah. <laughs> Well, That's certainly better than, you know, design somewhere else, yeah. I agree. <laughs> and I have a lot of Apple products myself, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting their new computer that will be assembled here. That's great. I love that you walk the walk on top of it. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. It, I, it'd be pretty ironic if I didn't. <laughs> Wouldn't it, though? <laughs> All right. Yeah. We have about a minute left. Uh, can you give us another product idea? Yeah. Uh, let me think for a second. There's all sorts of stuff for lawn and garden that are still made here. Yeah. You know, the, the, some of these big chain stores are, are selling junky, like, lawn tools, shuffles, or what, what have you, rakes, uh, you know, handheld tools, that you end up having to go back and replace every year anyway because yes. they're so chintzy. It's this planned obsolescence. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for our economy. And, yes, it turns out it's almost all imported. You know, you can spend a little bit more and find, you know, a shovel or a rake, for example, or, or a, a number of other yard or garden tools that will last for 20, 30 years. There's such a difference, such a difference in quality. You really can sense it as soon as you buy it. Todd Lipscomb with MadeInUSAForever.com. Also check out his book, Remade in the USA. Todd, thank you so much for being on the program today with us. Thank you, Randall. All right, stick around, everyone. Just after the break, we invite our good friend back, Mr. Gabe Saglia, with this week's Travel Deals. You're listening to Eat, Drink, Explore. Randall White here, host of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, with a tip for Central Coast wine tasting. Eberly Winery was recently voted Winery of the Year by the world's top sommeliers and has one of the best local tours, according to Wine Spectator. Eberly Winery opened daily 10 to 6, and the winery's cave tours and wine tasting always complimentary. It's easy to find, too. Located on Highway 46 East, just three and a half miles from Highway 101. Now it's time to plan your visit. Just head to eberlywinery.com. Hello, this is Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and I want to tell you about my new favorite discovery, 
Yosemite National Park. I recently went there with my husband and children, and we walked the trails to see the breathtaking waterfalls, admired the grand meadows and giant sequoias. But the future of our national parks is uncertain. Many challenges face our parks today, from polluted air and water to development threats outside their borders and inadequate funding to protect our national heritage. That's why the National Parks Conservation Association recently completed a decade-long assessment of the challenges facing our national parks, along with proposed actions that will ensure our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy the parks as we have. Our national parks have inspired Americans for nearly 100 years. As we approach the centennial of the National Park Service in 2016, please join us in helping to protect our national park legacy. Find out how at www.mpca.org. Randall White here, host of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, with a tip for Central Coast wine tasting. Eberly Winery was recently voted Winery of the Year by the world's top sommeliers and has one of the best local tours, according to Wine Spectator. Eberly Winery opened daily 10 to 6, and the winery's cave tours and wine tasting always complimentary. It's easy to find, too. Located on Highway 46 East, just three and a half miles from Highway 101. Now it's time to plan your visit. Just head to eberlywinery.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore media radio show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. You've waited all week, and it's finally here. The Eat, Drink, Explore Weekly Travel Deals Extravaganza. 849 the time, and for many of you, you've waited all month because it's been a month since we've spoken with Mr. Gabe Saglia of Travel Zoo. His deals are fantastic as always, and uh, we welcome Gabe back to the program. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Randall. How are good you, sir? You. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Did you have a good Fourth of July? You know, Fourth of July was really good. You know, for a, a while there, we thought we were going to go spend it in, in Lake Las Vegas, which is this uh, you know beautiful spot about thirty minutes off of the Strip. Uh, you know, man-made lake, desert views. But I remember the deal. Yeah, the weather a week before the fourth, and numbers were coming in at a, between one hundred and fifteen and one hundred and twenty. As much as I love a dry heat, we decided to stay put in, in Central California instead. So we had a great uh, fourth um, in, in Santa Barbara, and um, nice. You know, now we're ready for the rest of the summer. Yeah, that's where our audio guy was for uh, the 4th as well. Anthony spent it in uh, Santa Barbara. But let's head to Napa right now for La Belle Epoque. Is that how you say it? Epoque. Epoque. Um, yeah, the, the La Belle Epoque. So, you know, I, as you know, during the summer months, prices to uh, Northern California wine country can go way up. Mm-hmm. If you travel wisely, say weekdays versus weekends, you can get these great deals. 
uh, at, at even some of the more lucrative properties. So the La Belle Epoque is a sort of a Queen Anne Victorian mansion that's become now a boutique hotel. The property dates back to the 1890s. Uh, and now it's just beautifully, uh, nearly renovated, uh, uh, you know, posh place to stay in the heart of Napa. Uh, they're doing a two-night stay for $279. You get breakfast daily with that deal. And then uh, when you show up as a welcome amenity, you get sparkling wine and truffles. Mm. And then, of course, you get a couple of um, uh, of your, uh, uh, your usual two-for-one tasting passes with some of the great wineries there in Napa. That's for travel weekdays uh, through uh, next month, through August, and then every day of the week starting in November. Uh, November through February, March is usually when we get some of the best deals of the year, as you know, in, in Northern California wine country. Yeah, and that's two seventy nine for both nights, not per night, right? That's it. Two, it's almost like a two-for-one deal. Two nights will usually cost about... 500 bucks, so 279 for two nights. You're almost looking at a 50% savings on a great property in Napa. The property itself looks like it would be in uh, St. Helena or Calistoga. Is it in one of those two cities? You know, it's just outside of um, downtown Napa. Oh, okay. So, um, it's, uh, so, as you know, Calistoga, you know, just a little bit further north. I mean, all of these great little towns are yeah. accessible on the 29 and some of the surrounding uh, uh, highways there. But you're... Um, I think you're just outside of downtown Napa. I think I know where this place is. All of a sudden, it's all coming to me. And uh, the great thing about downtown Napa now is it has that riverfront area, and yeah, you can fine. you don't have to drive from winery to winery to winery. You can uh, do all your wine tasting right there in the downtown. <laughs> I like yeah, that. exactly right. Beautiful spot. <laughs> all right. Uh, the neighboring wine country of Sonoma County and Santa Rosa, we have a deal at the Vintners Inn. Yeah, so this is a great property. You know, If you don't know what, you know, what to choose, Napa or Sonoma, do them both. You stay at La Bella Boca, Napa, then you drive over to uh, the Vintners Inn there in Santa Rosa, sort of the threshold of the Noma wine country. This is a four-diamond property, European-inspired resort. You're sitting on 92 acres of vineyard. So mm. the visuals alone here are great. There's a John Ashton Company restaurant right on the property. Um, and uh, this deal now, uh, half-off summer prices to this property in, in Santa Rosa, one ninety nine a night. You get a couple of a whole bunch of extras, a couple of cocktails when you show up. Uh, there's dining and spa credits. There's a couple of VIP tours to taste wine at Sonoma Cotrere and Medlock Ames, uh, two-for-one breakfast. So uh, re- great price point for this property and then a whole bunch, you know, bevy of extras uh, to, to sweeten the deal there as well. I love it. All right, now uh, people might be not thinking Palm Springs, but that's uh, why you should be thinking Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, you know. It is, as they say, a dry heat in the Southern California desert. <laughs> but this is the time of year, to be honest, is, uh, and I've got friends who are there right now, because although it is hot, uh, the values are incomparable when you look at the, the year as a whole. So the Viceroy Palm Springs, beautiful four-star property, historic property. This is a, a, a resort dates back to the 1930s, sort of at the uh, original glamour era of the Southern California desert where the Humphrey Bogarts would, would come and, yeah. and hang out in the desert. Humphrey Bogart stayed here back then. Cameron Diaz stays here now. Uh, beautiful four-star uh, hotel. So the deal for a suite, a stay in a suite here, $200 a night, and it comes with breakfast in the morning. There's even a dinner for two included in there, and each of the two guests get a 30-minute spa treatment. Again, that's 200 bucks for the suite. If you want to if you don't need that much uh, elbow room, uh, the uh, standard <laughs> room will be down to 105. But with the extras, I think the 200 bucks for the, for the suite, with the dinner, with the breakfast, with the spa treatments is a is a tough deal to beat there at the Viceroy Palm Springs. Now the uh, exit when you're coming in on 10 from Los Angeles is uh, Highway 111 that becomes Palm Canyon Drive as you head down that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have been told, and I don't know if this is true or not, uh, it's called Highway 111 because it's 111 miles from its origin in downtown uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles, and that the star had something written into their contract back in the golden days uh, that they could not go more than, and it was like 120 miles or something from the studio because they might be called in at any moment to make a movie, and that's why Palm Springs became such a a huge destination for the stars because they could get away uh, without breaking their contract. <laughs> exactly right. Well, coincidentally, so. another interesting little tidbit, it's 111 degrees there today. Oh! So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. 111 all the way around. Now let's, uh, let's uh, go to the origin, Los Angeles, uh, and the JW Marriott, which is a beautiful, sleek-looking hotel, uh, one of the newest high-rises in Los Angeles. They had gone a long spell without building any high-rises in downtown L.A., uh, and lately they've popped up a few, one of them being the JW. 
Yeah, and you know, this is a part of Los Angeles, downtown LA, that is in the midst of a very exciting renaissance. I grew up in, for the most part, in, in, in Los Angeles, and if you haven't visited the downtown district uh, in the last, you know, five to ten years, then you missed a pretty remarkable uh, renaissance. So this is the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live, Ford Diamond Property. Uh, you know, you're walking distance to the Staples Center, the Nokia Theater, uh, the restaurants like Katsuya, where the celebrities like to hang out right there. Uh, they've got a Ritz Carlton Spa on the property. Both Carrie Simon and Wolfgang Puck have restaurants at this property. Mm. So, uh, a variety of different price points. Standard room rates for weekends stays down to 169 which is 40% off. But what I really like is their deal on one of their 780 square foot one bedroom suites that usually go for 799 now down to 249 and Whoa. it comes with a daily $50 resort credit, which you can use at the Ritz Carlton Spa um, or, or one of the uh, restaurants there. Uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, you know, destination in, Southern, in, in Los Angeles, yeah. and it's a fantastic deal for that particular property. And the views are unbelievable from there. So, mm-hmm. Exactly right. Uh, all right. Finally, we have just enough time, I think, to hit the Village Green Resort for people that don't like you know, downtown L.A. and want to be a little more rural. So this is in the heart of the Willamette wine country, two hours south of Portland in Cottage Grove, Oregon. Uh, 14 acres, beautiful gardens, uh, great, relaxing, mother nature trip and experience. A two-night stay here, 149, two nights, 149, breakfast daily. There's a dinner included in that and a wine tasting throughout the Willamette Valley as well. Travel through September. That's a fantastic deal, Gabe. Oh, I love it. And I love that, that wine country. It's gorgeous. All right, Gabe Saglia, TravelZoo.com forward slash top 20 for the deals he just mentioned. Gabe, thank you so much again for joining us. thanks, Randall. All right, take care and stick around, everyone. A whole hour of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio is coming up next. The Eat, Trick, Explore Media radio show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening show from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. Listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Fabulous. Now, here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. 
And a happy Sunday, fun day morning, everyone. Nine o'clock straight up here on Crush 92.5 FM. Great to have you with us. And the lovely voice you just heard introduce me there is uh, Kira Clapper. Many people here in San Luis Obispo remember Kira from her days at KCOY CBS 12. Now she's a big shot at ABC 7 in San Francisco. In fact, uh, what's the name of the woman who runs Facebook now? Susan Stamberg? Susan? No, not Susan sorry. Stamberg. That's a, that's a woman with NPR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at any rate, uh, that woman was, su- from what I've read online, she was supposed to be on that flight, the Asiana flight, uh, oh but God. postponed for some reason. I guess she was over in Seoul, or maybe still is over in Seoul. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kira interviewed her recently following the publication of uh, her recent book, Kira is always grabbing just major headline, you know, the the top news makers and stuff in the Bay Area. She's doing so well up in San Francisco and will be joining me, Randall White, next Saturday, less than a week from today for the Breast Fest. Uh, You can find information at thebreastfest.org or is it dot com? I need to double check that one. Uh, but at any rate, um, we'll be emceeing the event. It's a big fundraiser for the Charlotte Maxwell Clinic, which is a uh, it's a complimentary clinic. The it's all free, first off, uh, and for women that are undergoing uh, breast cancer treatment, which can be pretty rough. Yes, uh, yes. You know, with, I've had a few clients go through it. You have the past couple of years, yes. Uh-huh. And they have survived, thank God. But thank the, the heavy chemotherapy and such can really yeah. uh, do Exa- some damage. Know, wear them out, and, <clears throat> and so. What the Charlotte Maxwell Clinic does is provide them many times with uh, uh, organic groceries, uh, aromatherapy, massage, uh, you know, treatments for because they'll lose their hair. So like uh, stuff along those lines and just help them get through that tough period. Things that are not covered at all by Insurance. Insurance plans, exactly. That's so a great, or great organization. Charlotte Maxwell's fantastic, and uh, so all the, this is the 14th year for this event, and uh, it, everything's donated. The, the workers do not get paid, the, uh, all of the beer, all of the food, uh, everything donated so that uh, I don't think they can do 100% of the proceeds. I think they do need to rent the space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're at Fort Mason on the waterfront in San Francisco. Uh, and it's uh, it's really inexpensive. It's a fifty dollars for all the food, wine, beer, and entertainment you can handle in one afternoon from two to six o'clock uh, this coming Saturday. Fifty bucks is all. We are at the end of this show, or maybe coming up here just a little bit later, actually. Uh, so stay tuned. We are giving away uh, some tickets, a couple of pair of tickets to the Breast Fest. Uh, and then if you can't, if you don't end up winning, we highly recommend that you uh, go ahead and get some of those uh, tickets on your own and join us there in San Francisco for a, a fantastic event and a very good cause and a very good cause. And even if the, even if it wasn't even if it was not a fundraiser, mm-hmm. it's a really fun event. I've been to five or six of them. Uh, every time I've gone, I've been the MC, but I I would go. Anyway, whether you were yeah, yeah working it or not, I know the woman who founded the event, Jen, uh, because I used to work with her at the Marin Brewing Company up in Larkspur, California, and uh, her mom, a total sweetheart, uh, came down with breast cancer, and they found out about this Charlotte Maxwell Clinic, and uh, Jen, her mom's still with us uh, all these years later, uh, and Jen was like, you know. We, her mom can afford all those extra treatments, mm-hmm. but uh, the, all these women that she came in contact with that couldn't, uh, that's when Jen was like, you know what, we need to do something. So uh, she's been doing it for years and volunteers all of her time. She puts a lot of effort into this. That's great. That's great. Oh, boy, they've raised a lot over the years. All right, 9.04 the time. You're listening to the e Explore Explorer Radio Network here on Crush 92.5, coming to you live, live from downtown San Luis Obispo. We're back in just a moment. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic... 
historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at Eat drinkexplore.com and if you missed the show follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared video from the show and other great information eat drink explore radios market fresh helping perfect your California flavor you're listening to the eat Drink Explore Radio Network. Fabulous. Live every Sunday with the very latest food, beverage, and travel trends. Amazing. Now here's the host of our show, Mr. Randall White. 9.06 the time. Great to have you with us, everyone, here for another edition of the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network's Sunday Fun Day program. I am your host, Randall White. Typically, I say joined by the lovely and talented Patty Pyburn, but Miss Patty's out studying right now for her big master's thesis, I think, is what's due next Saturday. It wraps everything up for her, I know that. Anthony Renaro, our audio technician, will chime in from time to time, and I appreciate, <laughs> Anthony, you allowing me to put that mic in your face it's all right. and a Actually, camera on you I as well. I would wear a better shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he would, would have dressed up a bit. Usually nobody sees me. Uh, so great to have you with us, everyone. It is time right now. Well, first of all, before we get to the news, I just want to let you know who's who's ahead this hour. Uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour at 930, we will welcome Roger or Robert, rather. I think he goes by Bob Hodgson. Hodgson. OK, <laughs> <laughs> I need another cup of tea, I think. Hodgson. Hodgson. Uh, he's a retired statistics professor from Humboldt State University, where I went to school in the mid 90s for my broadcast journalism degree. Uh, he's going to talk about the science of judging wine. And if you think, well, what does a statistics professor know about that? He's been the winemaker at Fieldbrook Winery uh, there in Northern California, Humboldt County, since 1976. And his winery has won plenty of awards. Uh, He says it's kind of a sham. Uh, The ratings that are on these bottles and uh, gold medals and those sorts of things. And he'll explain why. I cannot wait to talk with him on the program here. And then uh, we'll round out the hour with Marianne Fowler. She's with uh, Rails to Trails. She will update us on California's Recreational Trail Program. That is a program here in California that gets its money from the federal government. Uh, That program is in danger of these federal funds being shifted to other aspects of California. Uh, However, Marianne has a meeting with the man in charge of this fund uh, tomorrow morning. She's here in California, typically in Washington, D.C., but she's in California and will uh, join us from her hotel in San Rafael, San Rafael in Marin County. I know the hotel, Hotel Panama. It's a great place. All right. But right now, it is time to get the very latest from the Eat, Drink, Explore news desk. And here's a look at the stories we're following this Sunday morning. Chinese state media reporting today. The two teenage girls taking a summer school trip to the United States are the identities of those killed yesterday morning when an Asiana jet crash landed at San Francisco International Airport. China's CCTV English edition says the girls were 16 and 17. According to Oakland's KTVU Channel 2, all passengers are now accounted for. 49 of the 307 people on board that plane are in serious condition, according to an airport spokesperson, and six are still listed in critical condition at San Francisco General. This also according to KTVU. Asiana Flight 214 was in the final minutes of its nearly 10-and-a-half-hour flight from Seoul, South Korea, when something went terribly wrong and the plane bounced around the runway, losing its tail section and bursting into flames. South Korea says it will conduct a joint investigation with the United States to discover the cause of the fatal crash and is sending a team to San Francisco. Meanwhile, federal officials say the flight recorders are now in the hands. uh, They now have the flight recorders uh, in their hands and are on their way to Washington, D.C. for analysis. Now, just this morning, in an interview with Face the Nation on CBS... National Transportation Safety Board Chairman Deborah Hersman 
said an important system that helps planes land had been turned off at SFO. Uh, This is a quote. What we do know is that there was a notice to airmen that indicated that the glide slope was out, close quote, Hersman said, adding it had been out since June because of construction there at the airport. The BBC reporting this morning uh, the cause may have something to do with the speed of the plane, whether it was going too fast or too slow. Of course, uh, we're still in the early stages. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet, so I imagine... uh, Anything related to a cause uh, will change dramatically over the uh, coming hours. We're doing our best to uh, keep this story updated at eatdrinkexplore.com. And so if anything comes down during the show, since it is a live broadcast, uh, we will uh, break into whatever interview we're doing and and let you know. But tragically, there were uh, two fatalities yesterday as that plane uh, touched down at San Francisco International. It's official. Fast food chain Long John Silver's is uh, serving up the worst restaurant meal in America, according to Health Advocacy Group Center for Science and the Public Interest, whom we've had on this show in the past. The organization says lab tests conducted show the restaurant's big catch. That's the name of the meal. The big catch includes 33 grams of trans fat or more than two weeks' worth of the American Heart Association's recommended daily allotment for that fat, all in one sitting. (laughs) So just one meal, and you've used up your two weeks. It also contains 19 grams of saturated fat, 3,700 grams of sodium. My parents just went, wah, because they they follow the sodium counts very closely, Uh, and more than 1,300 calories. The testings were done on a meal containing battered and fried haddock, which is a type of fish, onion rings, and hush puppies. A consumer or a customer could order a healthier version of this with sides including corn and green beans, we should add. The Center for Science and the Public Interest says the restaurant chain does not accurately post its nutritional information and is threatening to sue if the chain continues to post misleading calorie and fat info. It's also trying to get the chain to switch from using partially hydrogenated oil, which, fortunately for us here in California, is not a concern because that is already banned under state law. We drink more beer in California than any other state in the union, according to the Beer Institute, an industry organization that crunches these kinds of numbers. I do my best to work on that. (laughs) Uh, The Institute's most recent data shows while Californians downed some 22.3 million barrels of beer in 2012, the most of any state, we only rank 44th in terms of per capita consumption. (laughs) So that has a lot to do with the size of our population. But uh, yeah, the most beer is drank here, but when you spread it out among the people, we rank near the bottom. North Dakota holds the title, uh, in terms of uh, per capita consumption, North Dakota holds that title, followed by New Hampshire, Montana, South Dakota, and I'm not surprised, Wisconsin. And speaking of Wisconsin, a cheese company there is recalling several gourmet products over a listeria outbreak that has sickened people in several states, killing one. Uh, this is happening entirely in the Midwest. However, these cheese, pr- these cheeses, pronounced Le Frere, were distributed nationwide, including at Whole Foods. Uh, Consumers who purchased the recalled cheeses should not eat them and should throw away any remaining product. This is especially important for pregnant women, older adults, and persons with a weakened immune system. It is National Baked Bean Month. Yum. I love baked beans. So long as they're not too sweet. Sometimes they're just a little too sweet for my taste. Uh, Today is also National Strawberry Sunday Day. So I guess I could have one of those if it's made with uh, rice milk. (laughs) Weather-wise, it's pretty typical summertime pattern here in California. Really warm inland, cool at the coast. Uh, We're looking at uh, mid-80s San Luis Obispo, low 70s for Santa Cruz and San Francisco in the low 70s. Not bad at all. Mid-80s for L.A., near 100 degrees in our state's capital. This is the Etrick Explorer Radio Network. We're back in just a moment. May is National Bike Month. Now, I used to be intimidated at the thought of biking to work. I worried about my outfit, the traffic, and the time. But my expanding waistline and rising gas prices helped me rethink that position. And last May, I tried riding to work. 
What an amazing change. In the years since I started riding to work, I've lost weight, saved money on gas, and canceled my gym membership. You should try it. Here are a few tips to help you get started. Alter your route for biking. Cars and bikes are both vehicles and both have a right to the road, but you'll feel more comfortable and more able to enjoy your ride if you choose less traveled streets. Ride with a friend the first few times, someone who has experience biking to work. They'll help you figure out how to carry your clothes, where to park your bike, and the easiest way to get to the office. Follow all the same rules you follow while driving. Signal before you turn, stop at all stop signs, and stay in the rightmost lane going in your direction. Biking to work is fun, easy, and enjoyable. Try it. For more tips and techniques on how to commute by bicycle or to find other cyclists in your area, visit bikeleague.org. Can we have your attention for a moment? Eat, Drink, Explore Media has an important date we want to share with you. Saturday, July 13th. We invite you to join us at a craft beer and food event like no other. At last count, generous samples from more than 70 breweries will be paired with local culinary treats for the 2013 Breast Fest along San Francisco's waterfront at Fort Mason. Going on its 14th year, the annual Breast Fest has grown dramatically, raising money for an incredibly important cause, providing free complimentary treatments for women battling breast cancer. The Charlotte Maxwell Clinic offers services such as acupuncture, massage, organic foods, and transportation. The clinic's core mission to provide relief from the terrible side effects of cancer and its treatments. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is very proud to be among the main sponsors for this year's event. For more information, go to thebreastfest.org. The Eat, Drink, Explore Media radio show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? To top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. Welcome back to the program, everyone. 9.19 the time. Great to have you here for the Edric Explorer Radio Network. As always, we like to remind you that if you're a visual type of person and you're not driving, <laughs> you'd like to watch the show, you can go to eatdrinkexplore.com. By the way, we will be updating the website uh, very soon uh, so that you don't need an app. Uh, the website will automatically switch to so that it resizes for phones or for oh, uh, great. That's good. for iPads, that sort of thing. Anthony Renaro, our audio guy, yeah. uh, giving the thumbs up on that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm using uh, this one type of uh, format for another website that I built, actually for two others that I built. And I'm like, you know what? It's a lot of work to switch everything over from the Eat, Drink, Explore site, which is a fantastic site. But it that site is not responsive. It doesn't uh, change 
its size based on what you're using. What you're using yeah. yeah, so yeah. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier. We won't need the app anymore. You can still get the uh, or you can still get the app via uh, Android if you have an Android phone. Uh, just search the App Store, Eat, Drink, Explore. Uh, however, we've discontinued the Apple version uh, just because we're going through this uh, transition. At any rate, I am your host, Randall White, and uh, I want to update you a little bit on uh, what's going on at San Francisco International Airport, and I I wish I had a better update for you. Uh, The SFO website, if you have a flight this morning, uh, is still not working because of high volume. The number of people hitting the site has far exceeded uh, what (laughs) what that site's capable of, Uh, and it has been down now for, uh, well, going on 24 hours. they have diverted people to uh, their Twitter feed, which is twitter.com forward slash fly SFO. Uh, however, that feed hasn't been updated in 12 hours. So I'm a little disappointed that uh, the folks at SFO aren't um, a little more on the ball this Sunday morning, uh, helping people know what they should do in terms of an early morning flight. Not even early morning at this point. It's 921. Uh, they did say last night uh, at tw- uh, well at 9 o'clock, that the restaurants there at the airport were staying open overnight to accommodate flight disruptions and overnight passengers. The FAA website is showing that there are delays still at SFO because I believe that plane is still on the runway, which, you know, certainly would slow things down uh, for the oops for the airport. Yeah, they, yeah. they can't move it that quickly. Plus, they have to do their investigation. Yeah, right. The investigation is still underway, and uh, the latest we've heard uh, came from CBS this morning from Face the Nation, uh, a federal official saying that there that there was a system for landing that was turned off at SFO due to construction there at the airport, Uh, and it's been that way since June. It wasn't like it just happened on uh, Sunday morning. So, uh, so that information there. All right, so we had Gabe Saglia join us, uh, as he does always, for our travel deals segment uh, at the bottom of the last hour, and we didn't get to all of his deals. So I wanted to invite him back and ask him if he could uh, finish up the deal process. Hey, Gabe. Hey, Gabe. How you doing, Randall? Good. Thank you, sir. Did I catch you in the car? You're on your way home from work now? <laughs> I am driving, and I tossed my notes, so we're good. I'll, I'll talk about whatever you want, to, but it'll come from memory. Uh, That's okay. A- a couple of good deals that um, that were left off the uh, off the roster last time. Yes, we yeah. had we one that was out of uh, Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. So this is a great uh, a great package. It's from a company called Great Value Vacation. I was in Ireland last year. Uh, you know, phenomenal uh, countryside. The neat thing with this package, it includes airfare out of um, uh, several uh, airports in, in California, including L.A. Uh, including San Francisco, Sacramento, price at approximately, depending on your travel date, about fourteen hundred and fifty bucks, and that includes airfare up to uh, Dublin. You get to spend a couple of nights in Dublin, uh, a couple of nights in Killarney, uh, and a couple of nights in Cork, home to the uh, Blarney Stone. Yeah. And you get to visit the, or travel between these cities by the rail, and and, and it, it, that's a, a neat, neat way of, of really sort of taking in and enjoying that famous Irish countryside when you're uh, traveling the country by rail. Um, breakfast is included with that deal every day, and uh, it is for travel uh, November through March. It's, uh, a lot of the packages being put out now for European travel are targeting sort of late fall and winter travel when prices drop. But if you've not done Ireland, you know, this is, as you know, uh, Randall, the year of the gathering out there. 2013 is the year of the gathering. If you have Irish roots or you, you think you do and you want to go uh, uh, research them or explore them, They've got a ton of uh, festivities and concerts and, and parties going on, many of them free, um, all the way through the end of the year. So, uh, you know, this is a, a good time to consider an Irish getaway. That's a fantastic deal. $1,450, including the airfare from California. Uh, what, six nights, rail, breakfast? I love it. Yeah, the, the, the lead price out of uh, the East Coast is, is like eight ninety nine. so... Uh, and that flight out of, so when I did it out of Newark, New Jersey, was a uh, about a six-hour flight. It was an overnighter. So you leave, uh, and then you're, you know, you're there for that for a little Irish breakfast uh, early the next day. All right, let's uh, head to Costa Rica, if you can remember the details on Los Sueños. Yeah, the Los Sueños Marriott Resort and Spa. This is uh, in uh, Costa Rica, not far from the Manuel Antonio uh, Cloud Forest. 
Uh, and it's a beautiful four diamond property. In fact, Travel and Leisure put it on its the world's 500 best hotels list. Uh, they've got an 18 hole uh, championship golf course, uh, like four restaurants, and they've got a, a fantasy pool complex that includes uh, islands and swim up bars and bridges and canals. Uh, a beautiful, exotic destination and just posh, uh, big, uh, if, uh, if you have the fiber song. Uh, $109 a night. Rates usually start at about two. Four to two fifty a night down to one hundred and nine for travel through um, uh, through the end of the summer, uh, and uh, all you got to do is worry about airfare, which is pricing out out of say L A and San Francisco uh, over the next couple of months between five and five fifty round trip a month. That's an excellent deal also, Gabe. Hey, I know that you're tuned in to, and I think that does it for all the uh, different deals across the board here that uh, you had listed for the week, uh, but I wanted to tap you if I can. I know that you are uh, well aware of uh, flight situations following what happened at SFO yesterday. I saw you posted something on Twitter that something, uh, it was a retweet, but it was something every uh, passenger should know following that SFO uh, incident. Is there are there any like little bits of wisdom that you can pass along at this point? Well, you know, um, it, it's fascinating to see how the news spread. I mean, the, the Twitter uh, sphere uh, blew up uh, within really moments of, of this crash. Uh, survivors of the, of the crash, you know, tweeting out the, what had happened. Uh, and a lot of people have really have been getting this sort of real-time information from uh, who they're following on Twitter. Uh, you know, uh, you can follow uh, SFO, fly, it's at Fly SFO. They're giving uh, some, some great updates. Uh, United, which is up there, has been giving out updates on the, the kinds of delays and cancellations they're looking at. Uh, if you're flying to San Francisco over the next couple of days, a lot of the change fees, if you change your mind and don't want to, uh, you know, contend with some of the fallout regarding schedules, a lot of the change fees have been waived by oh. most uh, all of the airlines for flights to San Francisco. Um, and, and really, the, the industry buzz now is, is pointing toward the potential for human error here. In fact, the CEO of Asiana came out pretty quickly to, to rule out engine failure or any sort of mechanical issue. Um, but that said, it could be human uh, expertise also that, that kept this from being a worse tragedy than it was. It looks like there were some pretty last-minute maneuvers that uh, although they were coming in, looks like pretty low, uh, and hit a it looked to be a jetty just off the off the runway there. Um, it, it is miraculous to look at the wreckage that uh, there wasn't more, uh, there weren't you know more casualties. Uh, and, yeah. and it, it didn't become worse than it was. But you know, I uh, for those of us who fly a lot, it, it, it causes you to maybe pause for a moment. I, you know, air travel continues to be you know an extremely safe and effective way to get from point A to point B, and and um, It'll be interesting to see what the FTSB comes out with here in the next uh, couple of days. Gabe Saglia, thank you so much for joining us at this, uh, like, the return (laughs) show here. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Randy. All right, everyone, 9.28 the time, just a half hour left here of Eat Drink Explore Radio. We will be giving away a pair of tickets, a couple of pairs of tickets to the Breast Fest in San Francisco next Saturday. Certainly hope you'll uh, join us at that event, whether you win the tickets or not. Or not. Uh, Thebreastfest.org for more information. And we're back in just a moment. Can we have your attention for a moment? Eat, Drink, Explore Media has an important date we want to share with you. Saturday, July 13th. We invite you to join us at a craft beer and food event like no other. At last count, generous samples from more than 70 breweries will be paired with local culinary treats for the 2013 Breast Fest along San Francisco's waterfront at Fort Mason. Going on its 14th year, the annual Breast Fest has grown dramatically, raising money for an incredibly important cause, providing free complimentary treatments for women battling breast cancer. The Charlotte Maxwell Clinic offers services such as acupuncture, massage, organic foods, and transportation. The clinic's core mission to provide relief from the terrible side effects of cancer and its treatments. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is very proud to be among the main sponsors for this year's event. For more information, go to thebreastfest.org. May is National Bike Month. Now, I used to be intimidated at the thought of biking to work. 
I worried about my outfit, the traffic, and the time, but my expanding waistline and rising gas prices helped me rethink that position. And last May, I tried riding to work. What an amazing change. In the years since I started riding to work, I've lost weight, saved money on gas, and canceled my gym membership. You should try it. Here are a few tips to help you get started. Alter your route for biking. Cars and bikes are both vehicles and both have a right to the road, but you'll feel more comfortable and more able to enjoy your ride if you choose less traveled streets. Ride with a friend the first few times, someone who has experience biking to work. They'll help you figure out how to carry your clothes, where to park your bike, and the easiest way to get to the office. Follow all the same rules you follow while driving. Signal before you turn, stop at all stop signs, and stay in the rightmost lane going in your direction. Biking to work is fun, easy, and enjoyable. Try it. For more tips and techniques on how to commute by bicycle or to find other cyclists in your area, visit bikeleague.org. The Eatrick Explorer Media Radio Show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, Send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. Welcome back to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. Here now is your fabulous host, Mr. Randall White. 9.33 the time right now, and welcome to the final half hour of the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network's Sunday fun day. Great to have you with us uh, here on this July the 7th, uh, the final day of the 4th of July holiday weekend. We are headed right now up to Humboldt County, where I went to college. Uh, it's one of my alma maters. I also went to a Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. Actually, I also took classes at San Francisco State and uh, UC Davis, now that I think about it. <laughs> oh, and Santa Rosa Junior College and College of Marin. But uh, it was Humboldt State University where I got my broadcast journalism degree and uh, really love the area up there. And, you know, California wine country uh, is broken up into uh, so many different regions. One of them is the North Coast region, and uh, that's where our next guest has been making wine since the 1970s. Robert Hodgson joins us from Field Brook Winery. You can find them online at fieldbrookwinery.com. Hey, Robert. How you doing? Do you prefer Robert or Bob? Either. Okay. <laughs> I'll go with Bob just because it's uh, shorter and easier for me to remember. Uh, so, uh, Bob, you just got back from South Africa. I imagine you were doing some wine tasting. That's another great uh, wine-growing region. Oh, they have some great wines there. Mm, delicious. Uh, you used to teach courses at Humboldt State University. Uh, you were a statistics professor, correct? 
Uh, I taught statistics courses, but my uh, primary interest was in oceanography. Oh, in oceanography. Okay. Uh, I know there's a great program there for that. And uh, But uh, while you were doing that, you were also operating a winery, the Fieldbrook Winery there, with your wife since uh, 1974. Do I have that correct? Uh, 1976. 76. So no. The bicentennial. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the bicentennial year. So uh, you, I found an article on, I think it was winebusiness.com this past week, uh, that they had uh, reposted from an Arizona newspaper regarding your thoughts on wine judging, those uh, ratings numbers that you might find at your local uh, liquor store or grocery store, and of course gold medals, silvers, bronze, and those sorts of things. And uh, it's your belief that the judges themselves have such wide fluctuation, even though your winery has won medals and those sorts of things, uh, but you believe that the judges, uh, their fluctuation changes so much, uh, even if they're tasting the same wine, uh, that those numbers don't mean a whole lot to you and shouldn't mean a whole lot to us as customers. Uh, that's correct. I think uh, customers have to believe in their own their own taste buds rather than somebody else's because uh, the information you're getting from reviewers or from, I should say, the information from wine competitions uh, uh, is not very reliable. And it's not inexpensive for wineries to enter into these contests. Oh, it costs a bundle. It's, uh, I think the state fair is about $60, and uh, San Francisco, I believe, is $75. There's, uh, this is big business throughout the United States, uh, I should say, the wine competition business. Yeah, and when you think of the thousands of wineries that are entering, those those fees really add up quickly for uh, for the people running the contest. And given the great number of different uh, wine competitions, you start adding that 75, 75, 60, whatever it might be, uh, that adds up for the individual winemaker. It adds up to a lot of money. Uh, in fact, one uh, uh, person I know stated that if he wanted to make money in the wine business, he would not invest in a vineyard or he wouldn't invest and uh, buying uh, equipment for a winery, he would uh, start a wine competition. <laughs> there you have it, right? <laughs> you do. Just, now, uh, actually, just uh, to add up the numbers. Uh, for instance, there are uh, the state. I think at uh, San Francisco Chronicle uh, competition, there are like four thousand wines at seventy-five dollars a piece. Yeah. Uh, just do the arithmetic. Yeah, you'd be better at that than me, but it's a lot. <laughs> we know. Uh, now. I I am guilty of it. Our audio guy just to the right of me here, Anthony, uh, says that he uses the numbers as well. Uh, when we're if I'm standing at Bevmo or my local grocer and I and a place that lists the numbers and I see a bottle that's uh, around the same price as another one and one has a 91 and one has a 93 or one's an 89, I'm going to go for the higher number. Uh, but what was the variation that you found uh, from judge to judge? when given the exact same wine on more than one occasion? Well, the variation is phenomenal. Uh, it, it can go from no award to gold really? so on the mm-hmm. same wine. So, uh, you, know, you, you know, what the wineries are hoping is that uh, based on their investment uh, of putting those wines in competitions, uh, if they're smart, they'll realize that it's a gamble and they may, may win, meaning they may get a gold medal. And uh, if they enter enough competitions sooner or later, there's a good chance they'll get a gold medal, and that's the one that's going to be on that you're going to see. Not not all the uh, competitions they entered in which they did not get a medal. Oh, right, right. It, so it is a no, once again, it's a numbers game. Uh, enter enough competitions, and sooner or later, you're going to grab a medal uh, just based on the variation of the judges. Uh, that's true. So you. Um, yeah, you can stand there at the counter and try to and think you're getting a better deal by getting uh, at the same price, finding a wine that has a medal, but you're kidding yourself. So, how did you go about coming to this conclusion? Uh, walk us through your uh, your uh, would you call it a test or a, uh, research? Your research on this? Okay. Well, let me first say that I got into this because I noticed that. Uh, the wines that we entered in competition, sometimes we'd get a gold and sometimes we'd get no award uh, for the same wine, and I was naturally curious about that. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I brought this to the attention of the chief judge at the California State Fair and uh, got uh, his permission to start an experimental program. And the program consisted of uh, behind the scenes, when the wines are poured into glasses, we would pour uh, eight, uh, one wine into three different glasses that were coated with different numbers on them. So these would uh, appear in a flight of wine. So typically a judge would have in front of them maybe 15 to 30 wines or so in a flight. And within that flight, there would be three identical three wines that were poured from the same bottle. But the judges didn't know this, uh, and so we would uh, do this. And then we analyzed the awards. The, uh, the judge would give these three identical samples. Now, this would be on one flight, but typically we would repeat this whole procedure four times. So there was a opportunity for a judge to, uh, again, mm-hmm. there was an opportunity for the judge to do this several times. And we analyzed those results. And what we found out was that typically 10% of the judges could uh, were fairly close in their evaluation, and 10% were uh, pretty bad in their evaluation, meaning no award to gold, and the rest were in between. So some of the judges might might nail it each time with uh, either the same rating or maybe a point or two uh, variance, uh, and then o- another 10%, there's way off the chart... <laughs> Exact same wine, you know, no good, like you said, uh, no metal versus gold. And then uh, the bulk kind of fell somewhere in between, and somewhere in between is still a pretty big variance. Uh, yes, and uh, I, the other thing that we found out was uh, in one year, we would look at uh, maybe 70 judges and uh, evaluate them, and we were hoping that the judges that nailed it uh, could be used as uh, teachers or mentors for judges in the future. Mm. But what we found was that uh, the judges that did very well one year were right in the middle of the pack the next year. So uh, it seems like it really is a random process where uh, some judges by chance alone are going to do well, and some judges by chance alone are not going to do well. And uh, next year the same thing happens, but it's going to be a different set of judges. How big of a difference in price point can a winery charge if their wine receives high uh, markings for you know either a high uh, number or a gold medal or that sort of thing versus one that doesn't? Uh, you know, I really don't know the answer to that, and I'm not sure that's the practice that wineries have. Uh, I think wineries establish a price for their wine, and then they go into competitions. I don't mm. think they go into competitions first and establish a price second. Oh, that's good but, to know. <laughs> uh, but I'm not, I really don't know if that those practices would be up to the individual winery. Now, uh, do you no longer enter your wines in any of these sorts of things? Oh, I do. Oh, you know why? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I like to gamble. Right. <laughs> so it's just uh, usually every year. This last year, I only entered the state fair. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, usually I enter Orange County because they have no entry fee. Oh, okay. Uh, all you have to do is supply them wine. Yeah. And the, and the judges are all winemakers. So hey. some, some years we enter, typically we enter two competitions a year, usually the State Fair and Orange County. That Orange County competition is where uh, Charles Shaw just did pretty good with the judges. <laughs> two, uh, two I didn't Chuck. know that, but yeah. I know that uh, Two Buck Chuck uh, also won the California State Fair a few years back. Yeah, you know, it's a surprise. It's not always the price point. Hey, so uh, Fieldbrook Winery, what do you specialize in up there? And I guess in general, that uh, far north coast region, uh, I would imagine maybe Pinot is good? Uh, the north coast region up here, which is a Humboldt County, uh, uh, produces a lot of Pinot Noir and uh, I'd say Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. Although we actually truck in our grapes for most of our wines uh, from Mendocino County, usually. Your winery is located on one of the most beautiful highways, I think, in California. It is a 299, and it takes you from the coast up and over to a Redding. It's windy but gorgeous. Uh, your your winery is on the uh, temperate side of that drive, <laughs> really, true. really close to uh, getting to the coast there. Beautiful, beautiful region. I can't wait to visit it again. And when I do, I'll swing by Fieldbrook. I imagine you have a tasting room? We do. 
Well, Bob, thank you so much for joining us this morning uh, and giving us an update again. Fieldbrookwinery.com. A little insight on uh, wine judging and those numbers. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. All right, stick around, everyone. We're updating you on California trails right after this. Randall White here, host of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, with a tip for Central Coast wine tasting. Eberly Winery was recently voted Winery of the Year by the world's top sommeliers and has one of the best local tours, according to Wine Spectator. Eberly Winery opened daily 10 to 6, and the winery's cave tours and wine tasting always complimentary. It's easy to find, too. Located on Highway 46 East, just three and a half miles from Highway 101. Now it's time to plan your visit. Just head to eberlywinery.com. Can we have your attention for a moment? Eat, Drink, Explore Media has an important date we want to share with you. Saturday, July 13th. We invite you to join us at a craft beer and food event like no other. At last count, generous samples from more than 70 breweries will be paired with local culinary treats for the 2013 Breast Fest along San Francisco's waterfront at Fort Mason. Going on its 14th year, the annual Breast Fest has grown dramatically, raising money for an incredibly important cause, providing free, complimentary treatments for women battling breast cancer. The Charlotte Maxwell Clinic offers services such as acupuncture, massage, organic foods, and transportation. The clinic's core mission to provide relief from the terrible side effects of cancer and its treatments. Eat, Drink, Explore Media is very proud to be among the main sponsors for this year's event. For more information, go to thebreastfest.org. Randall White here, host of Eat, Drink, Explore Radio, with a tip for Central Coast wine tasting. Eberly Winery was recently voted Winery of the Year by the world's top sommeliers and has one of the best local tours, according to Wine Spectator. Eberly Winery opened daily 10 to 6, and the winery's cave tours and wine tasting always complimentary. It's easy to find, too. Located on Highway 46 East, just three and a half miles from Highway 101. Now it's time to plan your visit. Just head to eberlywinery.com. The Eat, Drink, Explore Media radio show you are currently enjoying is in a local affiliate commercial break. Live programming will return shortly. Did you know you can watch a live video simulcast of our Sunday morning and Thursday evening shows from your computer, smartphone, or tablet device? And to top it off, it's free. Simply head to eatdrinkexplore.com or download our free app from the Google Play or Apple App Store. If you have a suggestion for an upcoming guest segment, send an email to radio at eatdrinkexplore.com. We're always looking for fresh ideas, including yours. We love to share fresh, local, organic, seasonal, and sustainable ideas throughout the week. And the best place to find those are on our Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook feeds. Our username across the social networking universe is simple. Eat, drink, explore, all one word. Hey, college students, Eat, Drink, Explore Media is always looking for qualified journalism or marketing interns. Send us an email today so we can check your status and put you on the list for upcoming intern vacancies. Would you like to hear this Eat, Drink, Explore radio program on one of your local radio stations? Let the station know and contact us as well so we can get the ball rolling. Okay, you made it. The local affiliate commercial break is now over. Time for more informative and entertaining programming from Eat, Drink, Explore Media. Thank you for your patience. All right, welcome back to the Eat. Drink, Explore, Radio Network. Great to have you with us on this uh, Sunday. My name is Randall White, and uh, just to my right here, Anthony Renaro has been so good at working the audio board and chiming in um, from time to time. information, but... (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not useless. Uh, Patty's off today. And so this is our final segment, and we have just enough time left to get... Uh, update you on California Trails, which we'll do in just a second here. Uh, but first, I want to give you a phone number. It is 424-272-6365. 424-272-6365 is the number to call if you would like to win a pair of tickets to the Breast Fest in San Francisco at Fort Mason next Saturday, this coming Saturday, the uh, 13th. From 2 until 6 in the afternoon. It's a terrific fundraiser. If you don't drink beer, there are wineries there as well, uh, serving some uh, good wine up. And food, everything is uh, an all-you-can-consume sort of thing. And they have live music. Uh, it's, it's a great event for the Charlotte Maxwell uh, free Complimentary Clinic. And uh, we are giving away tickets right now at 424 272 63 65. We've got a couple of pairs to give away, and uh, good luck to you. But right now, we bring to the line uh, Marianne Fowler. She is with Rails to Trails. You can find them online at railstotrails.org. Uh, and you might re- recall back in uh, May, we had a guest from Rails to Trails on to talk about California's recreational trails program and why some federal funding to that program might be shifted within the California budget, uh, you know, which wouldn't be necessarily good for our recreational trails here. Marianne has a very important meeting tomorrow morning and uh, has taken some time out of her day today to update us on things. Hey, Marianne. Good morning. Yes, good morning to you. You're staying at one of my favorite hotels. I love the Panama there in uh, San Rafael, and I'm a Marin County native. Uh, it's gorgeous land. Hopefully, you'll get to uh, enjoy some trails up there on Mount Tamalpais uh, before your big meeting tomorrow. Yes, I actually have uh, one of your uh, people, local people in the Public Works Department, Craig Tackaberry, is picking me up after the interview and giving me a trail tour of the area, and it'll be very nice. Oh, so that. yeah, so many great trails there. So let's talk about a little bit about where things stand. There, are, there's federal money that, uh, if I understand this correctly, gets given to the states, and then uh, it it's supposed to go into the recreational trails program. But if California declines it, they still get the money and then they can use it however they'd like? That's almost correct. I think anyone in California would object to the phrase given to the states. This is a return of the uh, tax uh, fuel dollars that Californians pay into the Federal Highway Trust Fund. Uh And then it's sent back to the states based upon federal um, guidance and formulas and what have you. So in the case of, of the recreational trails program, yes, indeed, um, off-road um, recreational vehicles have paid a, a fair amount of money into the Highway Trust Fund, and only a portion of that actually comes back to California. It comes back under a formula saying that the approximately $5.7 million available to California each year should be spent 30% for motorized, 30% non-motorized, 40% mixed use. And in California, quite some time ago, a decision was made that that 40% mixed use would be primarily uh, non-motorized trail, uh, go for non-motorized trails. So that's kind of how it works, and that's the way it's worked for 20-plus years. And now with this whole sort of state reorganization process going on, as I understand it, uh, and, and wanting to have some you know, different priorities and what have you, um, there's a... a possible plan. I mean, it's, it, it has been suggested, and the Secretary has been in favor of shifting the money that goes for recreational trails uh, into what's called an active transporta- new active transportation program, which would be basically for urban uh, walking and biking. Which and, is wonderful, but, yeah. it, but it's not recreational trails. And so, uh, initially, that was the... Um, just sort of the that's how it was going to be done uh, scenario. But in recent days, now uh, they've, I guess they've heard from like some of the listeners to our program and some of the followers of Rails to Trails and those sorts of things saying, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> right. uh, we want to right. rethink this. And uh, that's why now you have a meeting tomorrow morning. Yes, there's been an incredible outpouring from Californians. Um, we know that about 4,500 just grassroots people contacted the governor's office uh, and the secretary's office. Um, another thousand, excuse me, a hundred California trail organizations sent a group letter uh, to the same um, public officials. 
uh, and then the the um, bicycle industry, bicycle shops, you know, retail outlets, as well as um, uh, motorized recreational vehicle industry, people combined, and about 50 businesses in California also sent a letter uh, to the governor and to Secretary Brian Kelly. And so, the whereas a, a, few, a few weeks ago, before all this effort started, um, the governor's excuse me, the Secretary's office has said, yes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to shift the money. Uh, and But but now he sent, has sent a letter to our members saying that as of the time the letter was written, which was June 18th, um, there, no decision has been made yet. So I was negotiating with their help, actually helping their office uh, facilitate their responding to our members who contacted him because they had never had so much um, input, you know, so, so many letters and things from right. uh, on a single issue. So they asked for our help, actually, in responding to their people because, of course, we were able to track all of them. Yeah. And so it was in the process of helping facilitate that that I said, I think I should come out there and talk with the secretary about the background and history of this program, which maybe he's not that familiar with, and I am. So yeah. they said, sure, come on out. So I did. And this will be a friendly meeting tomorrow. Uh, you were telling me on the phone when we spoke uh, the other day. Uh, what are some of the points, however, you will try to get across? Well, I think, number one, that this is a contribution to the Highway Trust Fund from California's trails community. Uh, number two, the the focus of so much of the Rec Trails money is actually on maintenance and restoration of trails that have through over time with the use of them or maybe greater use than ever anticipated, they've begun to erode and what have you. <clears throat> and then also on making uh, the trails in California and all over the country, but we're talking California, making them accessible. You know, since a lot of these trails were built, accessibility ADA guidelines have been passed, and so there's an, uh, an effort, you know, using this money to bring those trails into ADA compliance so they can be available to a greater range of the population, which is particularly important as we have more and more veterans returning from our uh, foreign wars <clears throat> who will need um, outdoor opportunities that are accessible to them. Right. Well, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, as w- as is witnessed by tomorrow's meeting, uh, your voice is very important. Go to railstotrails.org to find out how you can have your voice still be heard because uh, we don't want to give up yet. <laughs> Marianne no. Fowler, thank you so much and enjoy Marin County. Thank you. Bye-bye. And and good luck tomorrow. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us here for the Eat, Drink, Explore Radio Network on this Sunday morning. We really enjoyed the two hours we had together, and hopefully you'll join us right back here next week from 8 to 10. We're live every week. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.